Hi, and welcome to Aerospace Talk with Mason. I'm the host, Mason. And what you can expect in these podcasts is it's going to be once a week, except excluding next week for a reason that you'll find out soon. Um, but it will hopefully be posted on Tuesdays. Um, and it will also, you know, I'll be talking about the world of aviation mostly. And I'll also have a plane of the week every week. There will also be uh, once a month, I'll have a pilot of the month. And I'll also have fun facts, hopefully, every week for you. But after talking about that, let's go to my first subject of this podcast, and it's the University of North Dakota. The University of North Dakota is known to have one of the best aerospace programs in the world. And it just happens to be the college that I would like to go to for aviation. Um, but I'm also going to be taking a camp, and in that camp, it's going to be five flight hours included, and one of those flight hours is a night flight, um, and those five flight hours will go to hopefully me being able to get my private pilot's license when next, when I start school, uh, and I'll need 45 flight hours to that. So that'll be five out of the 45. Um, during this week, I'll also have a lot of simulator time, which is good. Um, you know, they're just trying to get you used to what it's like to be a pilot. And so, you, but you'll be flying small aircraft, of course, not the big commercial aircrafts because that school doesn't have them. They just have a big simulator. Um, another unique thing about this camp, it's going to be, um, only 20 students per session. So I got a week to get to know 20 kids as well as I can that are interested into this, in the same, uh, interest that I am in, and that's aviation. Um, but I am just really excited about this. And in two weeks, I'll tell you all about the camp and how it was, and hopefully I'll have some pictures. So I'll see you guys in two weeks to tell you more about that. But now going on to the plane of the week. This week's plane of the week is the F4U Corsair. Um, its role was a carrier-based fighter bomber, fighter slash bomber, and its origin was in the United States. Its manufacturer was Chance Vaunt. Um, its first flight was May 29th of 1940. It was introduced in 1942 on December 28th, and it was ended up being retired on in 1979. The main people that used this was the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Marine Corps, Royal Navy, and the Royal New Zealand Air Force. Um, and 12, and there was. 12,571 built. Let's talk about the specifications a little bit of this plane. Um, its length was 33 feet and 8 inches. Um, and there was, and it was 10, and that, in meters it's 10.26 meters. Its wingspan is 41 feet, and in meters it's 12.5 meters. Its empty weight is 9,000. 205 pounds. It is a propeller plane, as you can see in the picture. Um, its range is 1,005 miles, and for all of you aviation nerds like me, that in nautical miles, it's 285 nautical miles, and 1,617 kilometers. Um, its max speed is 446 miles per hour, which isn't very fast compared to the planes that we have, the commercial planes we have, or even the fighter planes, fighter jets we have now, which most of them can break the speed of sound, which we haven't, at this time, we have not done yet. Um, and we'll, and its combat range is really unique because it's so much smaller 
of a range compared to its actual range. Its combat range is 328 miles compared to 1,005 miles. And in nautical miles, it is 285 nautical miles. Oh, shoot. I got that wrong. Wrote down wrong. Which, you get the point, but it's in, and I'll tell you in kilometers, it is 528 kilometer mi kilometers. Now, that's just crazy, because within the 1,000 Five, it drops all the way down to 328 and if most of you don't know why that is it's because it, they're going they're climbing and falling climbing and falling maneuvering all the time swerving and they're flying at higher speeds than that what they are when they're just flying over oceans or stuff like that so when they're in combat they got to move around and they're using up more gas and so that's why its combat range is so small um its service ceiling is four, forty-one thousand five hundred feet, or twelve thousand six hundred meters, and that just means how high it can go, kind of deal without it stalling, the engine stalling and uh, gas running out. So, um, its rate of climb is four thousand. 360 feet per minute or 22.1 meters per second wow that is pretty that's a pretty good climb uh but again these newer jets can of course can do better because we got better technology that has advanced over the years of aviation now let's talk about the weapons what everyone's going to probably be excited about these planes they have 6.5 inch uh M2 Browning machine guns, and those guns shoot 400 rounds per minute. Uh, or they will have four 20 millimeter M3 cannons that shoot 231 rounds per minute. Wow, that is crazy. That that is a lot of. Wow, just big, big numbers. But let's also talk about rockets. Um, they have it can hold eight five in, or eight by five inch high velocity aircraft rockets and or a four thousand pound bomb. That's a bit. I'm pretty sure that's a big bomb. And if it's not, you can tell me in the comments below. Um, but that's all I have to tell you about this plane. It's it looks like a really nice plane, uh, and the reason I chose this plane, I don't know if I mentioned this before, it's my dad's favorite plane, and, you know, I think it looks like a pretty cool plane myself, and it also sounds like a very pretty cool plane. Um, you can, and that's all about the um, F4U Corsair. Um now let's talk about fun facts of aviation. My first fun fact for the week is pilots eat different meals. Um, uh, the captain eats the same meal as the first class in business, but it's the co-captain that eats different food to guard against cause cases of food poisoning, which is sounds like a smart idea. So captains can't be taken advantage of if an incident like 9-11 when people are uh, taking over the cockpit and ended up killing thousands and thousands of people. So that's a good thing that uh, airlines are starting to do. I'm sure they've done it before, but, you know, just thinking about their health and all of that, that's very good. Um, a Boeing ha 747 is made up of 6 million parts. That's crazy. Myself, I think that is a lot of parts, uh, 6 million. I don't even think I can count to 6 million before this video is over. I definitely know they won't. I can't. I don't even know if I can count to 6 million before the day is over. Um, and my final fun fact for the week is more than 80% of the population is afraid of flying. Now, I would like to know if you are afraid of flying, what is the reason behind it? 
Uh, so you can just comment below and tell me why you're afraid of flying, and I definitely will read it. Uh, myself, I thought I'd be terrified of flying because A, our plane's going to crash, or B, uh, uh, it's so high up. Uh, I am not a big fan of roller coasters, and I think it's because of the heights and how fast you're going and anything like that, but I love being in a plane. It's the I feel so fit, safe when I'm flying with airlines, and that's 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 because the pilots are well trained. Um, they will have well over ten thousand hours of flight experience, and that's crazy. Uh, that they, they spend so much time doing the job that they have, and the FAA does a good job of making sure the pilots are eligible to fly. And uh, so this is my first episode of Aerospace Talk with Mason, and I just hope you guys subscribe and wait for the next video to come out, as I will be talking about the P-51 Mustang next time, and you might be able to see the pilot of the month next time I post. Most likely will, and I will talk about my help, my experience at Aerospace Camp. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye.